The Seahawks are 2-0 on the season, but one of the biggest complaints I'm hearing is they beat the Denver Broncos and the New England Patriots. And I don't disagree with that statement because it's literally factual. They beat those two teams. But to me, I have many other reasons that I'm pretty confident that the Seahawks team is pretty good. And I'm not here to try to trick you into thinking that you should go put money on them to win the Super Bowl or that they're going to you know, be the best team in the NFL this year. But there are a lot of signs that point to the Seattle Seahawks being a really good football team. And they haven't really done what they're supposed to do yet. That's the big thing. And they've already had to deal with offensive line injuries. They've already had a game without Kenneth Walker, who might be leaning towards missing another game and seeing Zach Charbonnet running back one. But they still are finding a way to be a really good football team. Let's just talk about it. I'm confident in the Seahawks team. And there's so many reasons behind it. But it's hard to pick, you know, the main topics. We'll start with the offense, though. For the offense, we all believed or knew that the Seahawks offense was a pretty good offense. They have Geno Smith. They have Jackson Smith and Jigba, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, Kenneth Walker. Zach Charbonnet is a good third down back, pass catching back or backup running back. The offensive line was improved with guys like Connor Williams, with Charles Cross being a dominant left tackle this year, uh, with bringing in George Fant, who unfortunately got hurt. Bringing in Christian Haynes, who is, you know, had a pretty good PFF score and looked pretty good when he was out there for certain moments when he was kind of alternating with Anthony Bradford. We have Farrell Brown coming back. We haven't really seen much of Noah Fant yet, but he's a good tight end. The offense has so many pieces, and they haven't really done much yet. Now, it's hard to say that in some way because you look at some numbers and you see Geno Smith led the NFL in passing yards in week two, which is pretty crazy. Um, but the offense has still had its ups and downs. And you had DK Metcalf talk about that today, or I think it was yesterday. But in his press conference, DK Metcalf mentioned the fact that the Seattle Seahawks offense is a ticking time bomb and it's bound to explode. He talked about it. We haven't seen much of Noah Fant yet. You know, our run game has been up and down because of injuries. You haven't seen perfect play from Geno Smith yet. This offense is a ticking time bomb. There's going to be a point where Ryan, Glo Ryan Grubb clicks with the offense and it explodes, just like it did at UW, because he has the right pieces. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that Ryan Grubb could go to any offense. He's, I'm not saying he's the greatest offensive coordinator of all time. He could go fix the Panthers tomorrow. I'm not saying that at all. But Ryan Grubb, when he had the right pieces at Washington, you saw what happened in college. He became a superstar offensive coordinator. And we already had these pieces in the offense. And we've already seen this offense be really good over the last two years. There's been some up and down. Don't get me wrong. And I think Shane Waldron's an off, awful, awful offensive coordinator. And you're already seeing it with the Bears. Bears fans are on Twitter complaining about him already. Don't know how he got that job. I'm not even trying to be mean. Yeah, he's more successful than I am right now in life. He's had NFL jobs and does, you know, had great jobs. But he's not very good at being an offensive coordinator from what we've seen. Ryan Grubb has been, and I know it's at the college level, but you already see glimpses of these play calls getting a little bit better and the offense starting to click. And you hear the players talk about it. DK Metcalf's mentioned, once we get things going and the, the playbook that we have with Grubb is phenomenal, things are going to explode. You had in the offseason, Jackson Smith and Jigba said his eyes light up when he sees the playbook because that's how excited he is about Ryan Grubb's playbook. And you saw Jackson Smith and Jigba go get 12 catches last week, the best game of his career already, week two into Ryan Grubb era. This is going to be a really good offense. It will click. Kenneth Walker might have to miss another game. That's fine. Let him get healthy. I have strong confidence in this Dolphins game. Some people think it might be a trap game. I see that they're missing Tua and Skylar Thompson is their quarterback and it's in Seattle. It feels like an opponent right now for me that's probably around the same level as the Patriots last week they have the Patriots are not awful they have a decent defense they beat the Bengals I feel like it's probably same level of opponent but at home in our third week with this this defensive system being put in place with Mike McDonald and this offense being put in place with Ryan Grubb Zach Charbonnet will not have as bad of a game as he did last week all that is very true but if Kenneth Walker plays it adds more confidence for me but once they all click let's think about this 
Geno Smith's playing like a top 10 to 12 quarterback right now in the NFL, just like he did two years ago in 2022. Kenneth Walker could be a top five to seven running back in the NFL when he's healthy. The offensive line, hopefully, knock on wood, if everyone else stays healthy, it's going to get healthier when Abraham Lucas comes back or if George Fant plays this week so we don't have to have Stone Foresight in there. It's only going to get better. Farrell Brown is an addition at tight end that's going to make it better. Noah Fant will get better as time goes here because he's a good tight end. And we have our receivers from Metcalf to Njigba to Lockett to even Jake Bobo who, who comes in and makes some plays sometimes. There is no excuse for this offense not to get better. If it stays like this all year, fine. We're probably going to be a the team that we've seen pull out some wins against bad teams or average teams and probably lose to the good teams. But from what I'm seeing, it's only going to get better. And if it does, which is what everyone's saying is going to happen, including their own players, when it does, it's going to explode. It's a ticking time bomb, just like DK Metcalf said. So I have strong confidence that we're going to see a really big boost in the offense this week. I'm hoping to see some improved offensive line play, and I'm fingers crossed that George Fant can play. The offensive line will be much better. And I want to add one more element that I talked about in my PFF video, talking about the grades. The number one tackle in of all football, left and right tackle, the number one football right now in all football is Charles Cross. He's at the Trent Williams level right now, who's maybe the best left tackle we've seen over the last 20 years. He, I think, 78 uh, pressures and zero or 70 from like 78 passing snaps, zero QB pressures from him given up. He's graded the number one overall tackle in all football on PFF above Trent Williams, who's number two. He has been phenomenal. There's a reason we took him in the draft two years ago, spent a high draft pick on him and it's working. If that continues and then you bring back Abraham Lucas and you have Connor Williams now and We'll figure out the other pieces with Bradford and Stone Forth side. You know, there's some things to move around. If you have Lucas and Williams and Charles Cross, you're talking about three really high level pieces on your offensive line out of five. Not every team has three out of five pieces that are high level. Um, the Seahawks are doing this, winning two games in a row right now with the passing pass protection grade, like pass blocking grade for the Seahawks being a bottom two, just the rhythm and the Rams. So, any increments of getting a little bit better, the offense will click better than we expected. So I love the offense, and that's one reason I'm confident in the Seattle Seahawks. And I want to get to the defense. But quickly, before I get to the defense, I mentioned this in every video. So if you've already done this for me, or if you've already, already tried this, you can skip ahead 30, 40 seconds. But this video is sponsored by the Rebet app, which is legal in Washington State. It is a sports betting app in Washington State because it's like a sweepstakes game. But you can bet the spreads. I right now have the Seahawks minus four and a half. Um, I also have Geno Smith's overpass over. I think I took him over 200 and something passing yards. If you download the Rebet app, wherever you are, it's legal in like 45 states. Use promo code on tap or the link in my description. Just make sure when you get to the deposit part, it says on tap. They will match you up to $100. So if you put 10 bucks, you'll have a $10 free bet for free. If you put 50 bucks, they'll give you a $50 free bet. If you put 100, they'll give you a $100 free bet. But you have to have that promo code on tap right there on top of the screen. I have a tutorial video pretty much running right now. Make sure you do that $10 minimum. Use the code on tap. It does a lot for me. It makes there's a reason I'm, you know, I got a sponsor here and I've been putting out three, four videos a week now. So any support means the absolute world to me. Rebet app, promo code on tap or the link in the description, but make sure it says on tap or the referral code comes up. If you want to get your thing, you have to deposit 10 bucks minimum. Any support means the world. Let's get to the defense. The defense is only going to get better as well. And it's so cliche to say, don't, I'm not, I'm not trying to be cliche, even though I am, but one, you have a guy like Seahawks line, middle linebacker Terrell Dotson. He said the defense has been nowhere near as good as they wanted it to be. And that's coming from your linebacker. And that's considering the fact that this team has basically given up 30 points in two games. They've given up 40 as a team. But I mentioned this before. 10 of those points against the Broncos was not on the defense. It was a muffed punt. An interception all within field goal range and they scored and two safeties from the offense against the Broncos. That's 10 points that wasn't on them. So they've really given up 30 points, 10 points to the Broncos and 20 points to the Patriots. 
This defense has been pretty good. It's been looking really good. Witherspoon and Woolen have been elite corners. Julian Love has been phenomenal. Kayvon Wallace has been a really good safety replacement for either Diggs or Adams. It's been really good to have. Dotson in, has been pretty good, but they, the linebackers could be better. Hunter Henry kind of killed the middle of the defense. Uh, a lot of times when you get that tight end just tearing up the middle of a defense, there's a lot of a lot of that on the linebackers or the middle of the coverage, whatever you want to call it. But, you know, Jerome Baker got a little beat up last week. But once you have those two guys, Jerome Bra Baker and Dodson kind of clicking together, and he mentioned this before the season. He said, we didn't get much time together. We started having to hang out outside of work, you know, go kick it in Seattle or in Bellevue or wherever you're at. And they had to go find a way to bond and talk about football, talk about life, get to know each other because you need those two linebackers to be on the same page. And he'd mentioned that. So we're only on week two. Wait till we get to week three, four, five. And these guys start clicking together and the new safety start clicking together. And Brian Byron Murphy, just on two games in his young career, already sometimes getting double teamed once he starts clicking. Boye Mafe is becoming an elite elite edge rusher linebacker everyone has different words for what he is position wise outside linebacker defensive edge or edge rusher he's been elite he's has the number two most quarterback pressures in all of football only behind aiden hutchinson yes detroit lions aiden hutchinson like one of the best ed edge rushers in all of football qb pressure he has 15 hutchinson has 17 i think the seahawks were number one overall through two weeks most qb uh, pressures in all of football. Mike McDonald knows what he's doing with this defense. And that's why I'm so confident. Like I said, one, I'm confident in Mike McDonald Two, that these players are going to get better. Three, you have these linebacking, this linebacking core is going to figure it out together. You have boy Mafia looking elite coming off edges and doing what he does. And Achena Nawasu will be back in two or three weeks. So once they're back and things are rolling the right way just imagine the way this defense is going to look you bring back nawasu with boy mafe in there and you have your defensive line of jaron reed and byron murphy and leonard williams and Derek hall's looking good this year so many young pieces the corners like i said with Tariq woolen and devin witherspoon there's so many young pieces that are just getting better at football and figuring out a whole new scheme i mean this is not Pete carroll anymore this is not the, you know, different coordinators, different head coach. Uh, Aiden Dirty is the defensive coordinator, but really it's Mike McDonald. He's calling the plays. They are learning a whole new system, figuring out a whole new system. So you can't really say that they're fully there. This is the defense we're going to see. Obviously injuries, it's a knock on wood situation. You can't really call injuries. You can't say like, oh, but what if we get hurt? That's life. That's football. So in terms of if this team gets healthier, like Abraham Lucas, like Kenneth Walker, like Achena Nawasu, if this team gets healthier and stays healthy, on both sides of the ball, there's no reason you should not see improvements at all. So that's why I'm confident in the Seahawks team. And I feel good that teams that are 2-0, 64.8% of the time, or 63.8% of the time, make the playoffs since 1990. I'm sure that stack gets even crazier once you get to 3-0. and So let's see what happens. I feel like they're going to beat the Dolphins. I feel like we have a chance of going 3-0, and and I'm pretty sure that puts you at a really high chance of being a team that is going to compete the rest of the year. Uh, statistics aren't the end-all, be-all, but statistics tell you a lot. When I, if I see 3-0 and teams make the playoffs 70% of the time, then I'll tell you, if you don't make the playoffs after starting 3-0, and then it's an epic collapse. If you're in that smaller percentage group, that's a big disappointment. So you don't want to be in that group. You want to be in the right side of statistics, which we are right now at 2-0. and oh. There's one more thing. And I don't want to talk about this as it's a positive, but it does benefit the Seahawks. But it's not a positive. Injuries to other teams. And I, I, like, it's always hard for me to talk about it because people be like, oh, wow, well, you're going to win the the NFC West because the Rams are beat up and you're saying all their best players are out. Yes. And no, I, mean, I don't wish it upon them. I genuinely would prefer our entire division to be fully healthy the entire year and then win the division. And everyone knows that you won a division where everyone was healthy and you were the best team. 
But injuries happen, and it benefits other teams. The Seahawks are the only 2-0 team in the NFC West. I think the second best team right now might be the Cardinals, just the way they're playing and they're healthy. And then obviously it's still the 49ers division to lose and if they get healthy and they stay healthy. So when I say it's the Seahawks and Cardinals, I know the 49ers fully healthy at full force. If Brock Purdy's playing well too, the way he played most of last year, then yes, they are the best team in the division. But right now they're not. They lost to the Vikings. While the Cardinals almost beat the Bills on the road week one when nobody thought they were good and the Cardinals also put up 40 something points the offense was electric against the rams and then you have the seahawks are 2-0 so i'm just basing it off those things right now but when you look at the division and you wonder why sometimes these things happen i mean the rams and 49ers have gotten an injury bug and that benefits the seahawks whether it's the right thing to whether you look at it the right way or not i'm not saying i wish it upon anyone but it benefits the seahawks there's a reason you know the Rams are 0-2. If the Rams are fully healthy, they might not be 0-2. There's a reason the, the, the 49ers and Rams game this week is going to be a weird one. The, the 49ers and Rams play on Sunday in LA. And these are players that won't be playing, most likely. Some of them guaranteed, some most likely. Christian McCaffrey's out. Cooper Cup's out. Puka Nakua's out. Debo Samuel's out. George Kittle. Steve Avila. Jonah Jackson. There's many more, but... We're talking about both teams have guys that are their top four or five players not playing in the game. Now, they both have their quarterbacks, and that's another topic that I'll get to in a second. They both have their quarterbacks, but all those injuries affect three or four games. All of a sudden, if the Seahawks are 3-0 and and the 49ers are 1-2 and and so are the Rams, let's say the Rams beat them this weekend, you have a two-game lead in a division really early in a season. That's a nice thing to have through th- three weeks. So, knock on wood, I'm rooting for the Rams because they'd be 1-2 and two, along with the 1-2 and two 49ers. And then on the other side of the thing is, let's see. If the 49ers stay injured, how does that affect Brock Purdy? Brock Purdy has not been as good as he was for the majority of last year. I'm not saying he's bad. I don't want to be a Brock Purdy hater because I think he's a good guy and he's actually better than people give him credit for. But a lot of his success comes from the system. And how good the 49ers are. But his last four, five, six starts in the regular season have not been the best starts. And that's that's going to be affected if people are hurt. If you don't have George Kittle and Debo Samuel, that gets affected. Or if offensive linemen get hurt, that gets affected. So, yeah, I'm confident in the Seahawks right now. And I'm really confident in them. I feel as if they have a really good chance to start the season 3-0. And they have a really good chance of making a statement if the rams beat the 49ers like i said you have a two game lead in the division in week three that's a huge deal so i'm very confident i think the offense is only going to get better and the defense is only going to get better and i think it takes time when you have new coaching staff like they do i think it takes time when you're just trying to develop these playbooks on top of that if kenneth walker gets rest this week gets a little more healthy get a chenna nawasu back soon you get Abraham Lucas back hopefully four or five weeks or week four or five or six whenever he comes off the IR. It could be a special. It could be really special. So don't sleep on the Seahawks. Even though they're 2-0, and some people are sleeping on them because they played the Patriots and Broncos. The NFL is the NFL. The Cincinnati Bengals of Joe Burrow lost to the Broncos or lost to the Patriots in week one. Okay, It's the NFL. You can lose games. You win games. All that matters is you win. You win, whether it's a good opponent, a bad opponent, win the game. It's not easy to do. There's a reason there's, I think, out of 32 teams, there's seven or eight teams left that are 2-0. Next, if we win and we're 3-0, I promise you some 2-0 teams will lose. There will be like three or four teams left that are 3-0. It's hard to win football games, especially early in a season. So be happy about the 2-0 regardless who they played. Trust the process. Mike McDonald will get this defense to be even better. Ryan Grubb will get the offense to be even better. The health will get better, hopefully. Knock on wood as always. And make sure you check out the Rebet app and use promo code on tap or link in the description if you want to support me. It would mean the world to me. I, I really mean it when I say that. It helps me put out more videos. I think I put out three or four long form videos in one week. And I think I'm going to do one tomorrow talking about the Broncos or I keep saying the Broncos instead of the Patriots or instead of other teams. The Dolphins Seahawks game coming up on Sunday. I'll probably do like a little preview video on that tomorrow on this youtube channel so if you want to see that 
you got to do a couple things. You got to like, you got to subscribe, and you got to turn on the bell, get notifications, be some of the first ones to comment. I'll comment back, talk to you. And uh, I'm thinking about doing some giveaways soon for those who get on the videos quick, turn on the bells and make comments quickly. I'll, I'll start doing some Jersey giveaways and different things. All the support means the world to me. I love y'all. And I'll be back tomorrow. See you then. Peace.